Flex boxes allow content to sit side by side or stacked and intelligently rearrange themselves to best suit the device screen size. Creating flex boxes is incredibly easy. All you need are one, a holding container, two, an internal content container, and three, a responsive media query. That's it. Let's begin by creating our holding container. Set the width to 100%, display to flex, and we'll give it a background of yellow so we can see what's going on more clearly. Let's add the main container div to the body. That's step one. Next, let's create the internal containers which will hold our content. Let's start with a left and a right container. We'll make the left internal container red and the right one cyan for their backgrounds to easily tell them apart in this tutorial. The Flex 1 property value pair simply refers to the amount of space ratio that each flex box will take up. I'll demonstrate this shortly. Let's also add some placeholder content to both. That's step two. And there it is. The flex box is almost ready. The internal containers automatically scale to adjust for the screen width and so there are no horizontal scroll bars. I'm going to give the holding container a padding of 50 pixels so we can see all the elements and add a box sizing property since the width is 100%. So there you can see the yellow holding container with the two red and cyan internal containers. Let's give some padding and font styles to these two internal containers. That's looking better already, and the flex box works perfectly with all the padding and styles. In fact, the only issue left now is to get the cyan box to automatically drop below the red box when the viewport goes from desktop to mobile screen width. This, as you may have guessed, is where the media query comes in. Step 3 is to create a media query and set the max or min width. I'll set the max width to 768 pixels. Once that's done, we need to tell the holding container to change the direction of the internal boxes from horizontal rows, the default, to stacked columns. We do this by adding the property value pair flex direction. In desktop mode, it's set to row or side by side, but in mobile devices, we want the internal containers to stack one above the other. So we add the property flex direction to our media query and set the value to column. That's it. Now when the screen width narrows, the sign or right internal container stacks below the red or left internal container, a column. If we wanted the sign box to stack above the red instead, we simply change the flex direction to column reverse. Now the right side boxes will stay on top and the left side boxes will drop below. The layout is entirely up to you. Now that we have the basics, let's add another internal container in the middle. We'll call it internal container M. Set the background to pink and add some placeholder text. And there we have three internal containers, or flex boxes, that behave exactly as we need them to. You can add as many boxes as you like. There are no restrictions. 
Let's say of the three boxes, the red one is the most important and therefore needs more space. To achieve this, simply change the flex property value from 1 to 2. Now, the red box takes up twice the space units, while the other two take up just one space unit each. Notice all width ratios are preserved, and when the 768 pixel mark is reached, the boxes still stack automatically. We can even give the pink box a flex unit of 3, and the width ratios will be maintained across. Let's bring them back to one unit each. Now that we've seen how the internal containers adjust automatically to the width of the holding container, we can remove the ugly yellow background and padding of the holding container, so viewers only see the content boxes. Note that the holding container is still there though, and it's doing its job in the background. You can now spruce your flex boxes with headings and images for a more professional feel. I'll use the same image in this tutorial, but you can use your own images and even videos. What's more, if I have more content in the red box, all the other boxes will automatically adjust their heights to appear even. You can see all the flex boxes take care of their heights automatically when side by side or stacked. As the name suggests, flex boxes are incredibly flexible and powerful, and we can use them with just three steps and a minimum of CSS code. You can even add margins to each internal container so that they don't have to nestle up against each other. In fact, just about every CSS property, from borders to flip cards, are accepted by flexboxes. You can even have a max width for the holding container, say at 900 pixels instead of 100%, set in the middle of the page using margin zero auto and everything will still work perfectly. Once you use flexboxes, you're truly on your way to creating amazing website layouts for all screen sizes. The code snippet for this tutorial is in the comments section, and if you have any questions, please ask. Enjoy flexboxes and CSSU next time.